Hey everybody! Today is War Paint Wednesday and that means that we're going to be finishing this little figure over here. Let's see there. He um, he's not actually gonna be one of ours but he, um, a friend asked to have him painted so we're obviously he's already kind of painted but we're going to do the finishing touches today. So we're going to first start out with dry brushing the cape here. And uh, we'll do that. He has been based with Nagarath Knight, that is a very dark purpley color. And with a Theros purple. So the next step is dry brushing him with Jean Steeler Purple um, so that he the, the folds will pop. So we'll start out and they say when you dry brush that you shouldn't dip it in water but I always do that because then the paint doesn't stick as much. Um, and can I get the tissue? Always shake your paints. I should be yeah. And then we work that into the bristles properly. As you can see here, we work it into the bristles then wipe most of it off. And then we take the edge and just lightly go over that. Like obviously the further down on the cape, the more flutter and the more light it'll catch. And it's best to do this in layers. You can see there that it made the symbol pop, but we're going to make this gold. A lot of dry brushing brushes are, I find, are really hard, but or have stiff bristles. But this one is quite soft, and I I kind of like that better because then it just doesn't really go into. You see the recesses here that are already darkened up with uh, what's it called? And one of the shades, the the blue tinted shade from um, the blue tinted shade. And there we have it. And then we have a little bit, I took a little bit too much paint here, but what we'll do is we'll use some more of this and just put it around the loincloth here because that needs a little bit of highlight. So let's just quickly do that. A little bit too watery. Let's see. 
and you will learn to feel what is the right consistency of the paint. And it's preferable to paint like after you've eaten so that your hands are as little shaky as possible. That way you get most of the detail and do fewer mistakes. Make your food. Okay, and, and then just try to catch all the edges carefully and gently. Oh, and I, I don't know what this model is called. I know it's from Warhammer Age of Sigmar, uh, the fantasy line more than the sci-fi. Um, obviously, they're all fantasy. It's orcs in space. And elves and, oh, there we go, elves and knights and all the good stuff. A little bit of highlight there. This paint pot is excellent. Keeps all your brushes where they should be. I realized he has a tassel on his head, so that needs to be dry brushed. Wipe most of it off. And start at the edge because that's where you want most of the light. And just a small flicking motion. You see how that makes the whole thing pop? Like before, it didn't have much definition at all. So you do two layers of the base color and then uh, you do layer, shade, and then another layer. Throw some shade in there. And be careful because the uh, plastic, obviously it is plastic, so be really careful with the thin edges out there so you don't like break them off accidentally. Get a little bit more on the edge there. Remember, there are no mistakes, there are just happy little accidents. It's all artistic interpretation anyway. All right, let's put that in the water so it doesn't dry up. Um, and then we will see, we have put in some gold detail here already, but it's not really, it's not doing much for me. So we need more depth to it. And we get that by using other colors of gold or whatever color it is but right now it's gold uh, right we need to remember how i said we were going to do this so we're going to do that and for that we first 
shake up the base color, which is Retributor Armor. Isn't that cool? Retributor Armor. Shake, 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 shake. Seriously, this has been opened. And we got some gold on our finger here. So let's just use that. No need to dip into the paint pot if we get it on our fingers. So then we carefully don't press too hard because then you'll go into the dips and, and where there's already shade and things. So just gently, gently basically follow the contour. There we go, first line. I really hope this is visible on that camera. And the second lightning bolt, isn't that nice? I really like this gold color. And I don't think we need to touch up any other gold areas. Now that it looks Well, I still have it on the brush. All right, and that's done. going with auric gold on the detail of the golden parts of the armor like the shoulder pad and like down there yeah um actually i think we should go in with sigmarite because this one is a dry brush and there's no no let's go with auric gold first because that will be much easier on the shield if your paint is milky, it needs to be shake, shook. Keep shaking it, keep shaking it, keep shaking it. Okay, so we're back from the shake, shake, wake, and shake weight exercise. And just grab a little bit of our cleaner brush here. And this gold is a very, very light consistency, so you don't, like, you, you really don't need a lot of it. And we'll just try to like get the most prominent surfaces here, like up here, obviously. Basically where the light would fall on the figurine. Right here along the top edge. I love this paint. It's so much sparklier than the other gold. It's the highlight. Because it is highlight. They have special paints for like edge highlighting and stuff, but who needs that? Like you can do a lot of the effects with just simply other paints. Like this one. And a little bit of that on that weird symbol that I have no idea what it is. And if you hear, to hear a weird sound in the background, that's the dog. It doesn't do 
a lot, but it brings a little bit of shine just to the edge. Like, yeah, it catches the light. Um, and then let's do the same thing up top. Don't want to dilute this color too much because like I said it's it's already it's not very pigmented but it brings a little sparkle to it. Let's have another little angle here. No accent that I use, I'm just playing around. And on this weird halo thing, obviously. Very important. I try not to get it on the purple, but it's not, not a disaster if that happens. these weird spiky things. Give a little bit more of my hammer just to bring out the real gold color here. Then we have a lion belt thing, which we're going to have to do real, really carefully and not get too watery or too much gold here. Gently going over the little bone grooves. This is the belt here. And then clearly we have some detail here on the loincloth that needs to be carefully and gently painted. He has a symbol underneath too, so let's just put some gold on that. Very pretty. And on the sword, of course, just to decorate the thing, decorate those weapons.
actually painted on the inside too, even though that's kind of unnecessary, but just because sometimes I'm a sucker for detail. And on the gold side, paint, 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 paint. And now we're gonna do something kind of unexpected and fun, which is we're gonna use nail polish because this one has this really nice iridescent color, and, and you can see on the back of this wing here what it does. We're gonna put this on the sword because that basically make it look like an enchanted blade and that's real cool so and since this one hasn't gotten tacky or great and gross or anything it, it works with these acrylic paints so we're probably gonna have to use a brush that's dry and not dipped in water or anything because obviously don't mix water and nail polish it's just not a recipe for disaster, just don't, don't do it. A little bit on this brush here. To try to make the best of it. Oh yeah, that looks great. It's beautiful. You see how cool that turned out? Oh, I love it. Okay, so we're gonna have to clean that with nail polish remover later. Don't have that. Oh, great at this moment. And then we're gonna do ring fan steel. Actually, let's do that when that's dry. And I recommend always close your paint pots. It's so easy to just oh, I gotta do something else, and then you walk away, and then your paint has dried a few hours later, and then then you just have to buy a, really, a new paint pot, and we all know those are not cheap. Not cheap at all. So, um, this is looking good, and uh, we wanted some dry brushing done. And to do that, basically, clean off the dry brushing brush. We also have this really nice brush cleaner that works well, works really well. There we go. Brush um, okay, so Sigma Right dry brush from gold. The Dry brushing paints have this really weird spongy texture uh, that takes a while to get used to, so just dip your brush in there, work it into the bristles. Brush up some of it. And then go over the areas you want to make stand out. So you can see how Working in layers really changes how things look. Okay, 
there's more there. And you see, like, it, it catches the light in a way that it's really hard to do with just painting the edges, the veins. line over here. Carefully there. Just really carefully down. And this is golden scales here. And try not to push it down into the recess or anything. Let's keep the brush to the strokes really light. And try when you dry brush also to get the edges a lot like I already said like where the where the light would catch like try to get that because then you really get a cool light effect oh here we go looking good and now let's get the filming then let's do some highlighting on the sword because and then i think we're pretty much done actually we're gonna do some shading on the rock too because i like doing that all right so ruin fine steel just to highlight the edges of the sword this is shaking a bit more because water they separate after a while, so you really have to shake the paint. More shaky shaky. Need to distribute the pigments properly throughout the whole thing. Okay, so, as usual, you don't want too much on your brush, especially when you're doing, like, edge highlights and stuff. Like, you can see here, the lightning bolts. We want to highlight those a little. And the hammer. Is that hammer? Because now that's gotten golden, and it was silver before, so... It really just lifts the whole thing. You get a little bit of highlight on there. And that's why makeup gurus love their highlighting because it makes your cheekbones pop. This just makes details pop. But really, you don't have to be a pro. You just carefully run your brush along. And it will make everything look it gives it depth. Everyone loves depth. Like depth, depth. I find that running the brush sideways uh, gives me more control over where the paint goes. Like it's it's easier to not smear it everywhere if I do it that way. Make sure there's not too much on the brush. Then let's get this upper edge part because that always looks slightly different 
and the rest of the sword, as far as I know. Like, and you can see, like, it highlighted a lot of things. There's more going on on the sword. Everyone wants more going on on their swords, right? A little bit of magic, a little bit of flow. That was the sword. Wow, that looks really good now. Um, are there any other parts that are silver that need to be highlighted? Oh yeah, inside of the sword. Inside. Okay, cool. Now, let's do a little bit of shading on this rock here. Because you can see that it's just a piece of gravel, but it looks so much cooler when you... Let's take this one. Obviously, uh, Games Workshop has their own shade brushes, but if you have, like, old paint brushes, just use those. You don't need... If there are specific ones. And close your shade pots because these fall over so fast. And so, so leaks. Like, we, we don't want that. I'm just basically painting all over it because you want to make it look a little bit dirty. That's basically what this shading thing is for. Make things look dirty and kind of realish. Obviously, it is a real piece of rock, but. And don't forget to shade the skulls of your enemies. Important stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can see how that sort of brings out the detail on this here rock over there. Anything else? Now, the, this technical blood for the blood god. Should we put some blood on the edge of the sword? Or just like drip down the snow? Yeah, we should. We definitely should. Dry it off a little bit. Oh, that really does look like blood. Kind of gross. So let's put some blood here on the edge of the sword because he's been to battle, obviously. He didn't have time to clean it up before he left. But here. And then, obviously, it kind of dripped on the snow here.
maybe just a little bit of earth shade right there too. And there we have it. Newly painted night. There's the camera. It really was just about adding some highlight to this guy. See you next Warping Princess.